What we have in this campaign is a president who has four years of serious accomplishments with a vice president that has had vast experience in foreign policy over his entire lifetime, facing two people, Governor Romney and Congressman Ryan, who have zero experience in national security. In Governor Romney, what worries me is just a series of statements that show that he's not ready for prime time in terms of national security. If you look at Libya, uh, Romney you know, shot from the hip before he had any of the facts. As events were still unfolding and we were just learning that Americans had been killed, Mitt Romney went out and made a statement. It's a terrible course to, for America to, um, to stand uh, in apology for our values. The statements uh, were inappropriate and in my, in my view, a, uh, a disgraceful a statement on the part of our administration. And he went out and attacked our president. It was shocking. It was the most stark example of trying to be politically opportunistic and use a national tragedy to your advantage. The suggestion that anybody in my team would play politics or mislead when we've lost four of our own governor is offensive. That's not what we do. The last thing we need to do is to go around making belligerent statements as if he were going to go to war with every single country. The worst example of bluster is that he accuses the president of not doing enough in Iran. If Barack Obama gets reelected, Iran will have a nuclear weapon and the world will change. The American people have to understand how effective the sanctions have been against Iran so far. President Obama has brought the international community together to impose the most crippling sanctions in history. Mitt Romney's policy on Iran is just to ratchet up the rhetoric. Romney is way out in front of his headlights on this one. And this bluster or this constant, well, we'll just be really strong and tough. Well, what does really tough mean? If he's talking about going to war with Iran, he needs to tell us. What he has said about Afghanistan is that it's a mistake to set a timeline. I can't understand that either because in order to plan and to make clear to the Afghans that they are going to have to run their own country, I think having a timetable is very important. The sense in some of the ways that he's talked about Iraq or Syria or Afghanistan is that he might want to redeploy troops. Governor Romney called the ending of the Iraq war and the bringing of our troops home tragic. The precipitous withdrawal uh, is, uh, is unfortunate. It's more than unfortunate, I think it's tragic. Which is really hard to understand. He wanted to keep our troops there longer, tens of thousands of them, was not clear about their mission, their strategy, or how long they would be kept there. Governor Romney really hasn't talked much about the fight against Al-Qaeda. He actually said, look, I wouldn't move heaven and earth to go after one man, bin Laden. I can't believe that at some stage he would even have thought that it wasn't worth going after Osama bin Laden. Romney just says things that are not true or irresponsible and is willing for politically expedient reasons to put at risk our foreign policy. I find it as irresponsible in a candidate as anything I have ever seen in all the years I've been in public life. American voters have to ask themselves, does Governor Romney pass the gut check to be commander in chief? We cannot afford to have Governor Romney and Congressman Ryan as president and vice president because of Governor Romney's lack of understanding of the issues that a commander in chief has to deal with that is dangerous. If there's ever a time for a thoughtful, intelligent president, it's now. President Obama has had a steady hand for the last four years, bringing our worst enemies to justice, restoring our alliances. I'm very proud of the president, how he's led. His record as Commander-in-Chief has been stellar, it's been strong, and he champions our values wherever he goes around the world. <laughs>